tried talking to her. Of course I've tried talking to her, but she doesn't seem to want to listen. Oh, I don't seem to want to listen. Good, Jane. Release in anger. Very positive. You're the one who just wants to sit Shh, in front of the television much, or... Now, <laughs> let me ask you a question. When do you think the problem actually started? About, about six months ago, I suppose. Good, good. What happened? Well, you started to change, didn't you? You started getting mistrustful, started getting jealous. Brian? Well, yeah, I suppose I did experience a change in my attitude. What do you feel promoted that change? Well, I got this job. Job? Yeah. Ah, there's your problem, love. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're now folks after the kids. Well, we haven't got any kids. Haven't you? All right. Who cleans the house, stuff like that? The house is fine, that's not the problem here. No, the problem here is your jealousy. Yeah, don't change the subject, well, now, hang on a minute. Sometimes you say you're going to be in at 7 o'clock and you're not back till 10.30 or 11.30. Well, occasionally I work late at the office, yes, but you, you seem to think that I'm having drinks with men from work. And, uh, does that sometimes happen? No, no it doesn't. Of course you say that, love, but we've only got your word for that, haven't we? <laughs> Yeah. You could be anywhere as far as we're concerned. Exactly. But you know where I am because you phone me at the office. I'm always at the office. That's all I ever do is work at the office. What else do you do in the office? <laughs> um, excuse me, are you fully qualified to do Never this? Never mind all that. Now, no, 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 really, I'd really like to know. <laughs> Fingers on lips. Now, <laughs> I think it's about time, Brian, that you started to learn to compromise. Look in the mirror and say to yourself, I love my wife. She loves me. I respect my wife and she respects me, but more importantly, I trust my wife and she trusts me. Would you do that for me, Brian? Okay. And Jane's going to agree to compromise as well, aren't you, Poppet? She's going to agree <laughs> for a trial period to have a private detective following her around just to make sure that she's not doing anything. No chance. How can you suggest that? Leave her alone! 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 All right, mate. <sighs> Nothing to do with me. <laughs> Don't come crying to me when she sat on top of the photocopier at work getting nobbed by a grubby little office junior. That's all I'm saying. I'm not putting up with this. Oh, yeah? You're off to meet your lover, boy. They're all slags, mate. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a break from washing the dishes every night. My hair's much longer than that. My eyes are green. And both my arms are the same length. <laughs> and my nose is nothing like that. That's rubbish, Johnny. <laughs> Absolute rubbish. <laughs> What are you doing, Ronnie? Oh, hi, Karen. I think Tim's being unfaithful to me, so I'm just seeing if he mentions any women in his sleep. Isn't that a bit unlikely? Um, oh, shh, 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 he's saying something. Ronnie. That's your name. He hasn't finished yet. Alison. Alison. Alison to every word you say, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Mavis. Mavis. May this relationship last forever, Ronnie. <laughs> Abby. Abby? You make me so Abby, Ronnie. Oh. Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne, in a hundred years, I still love you, Ronnie. Oh. Philippa. Philippa. Philippa Kettle, make us a cup of tea, Ronnie. <laughs> Beverly. Beverly. Beverly, careful you don't burn your hands when you do it. <laughs> Dawn. Dawn. Don't leave me. <laughs> Karen. Karen. Yes. <laughs> Karen. 
Karen regardless? <laughs> Karen the community. <laughs> <laughs> Karen Van Pack. <laughs> Darling, what an excellent meal that was. I can explain everything. Have a go. I've never been on a swing before. Yeah, of course you can. Oh, you love it. It's really easy. Oh. Great. <laughs> Wee! 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 I'm all right with the wees. Just can't do the woos. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oscar, where have you been? Tis the hour of three. What drunken carousing keeps you from hearth and home? Oh, Mr. Riley's fine wine emporium and firkin. <laughs> I despair of this devil-may-care attitude and this constant gallivanting. Now, your mother and I have had a talk about you. Yes, well, there's one thing worse than being talked about, and that's... Getting your cock caught Not in a being <laughs> talked about. Yes. Not being talked about, Oscar. That's worse. I'll grant you that. <laughs> All right, what about this one? Two nuns in a kebab shop. What's <laughs> happened to you, boy? You've lost your style and you are bereft of wit. And what was that ridiculous remark you made last week at the American Literary Convention? Ah, that was clever. We have so much in common with you Americans, except, of course, language. But they were not the words you uttered, twere they? weren't they? <laughs> no, you said we have much in common with you Americans, except, of course, you lot are all fat bastards. <laughs> it is not wit, Oscar. It is not the mind of a great thinker. Oh, I'm sick of being a great thinker. I want to present Bullseye. <laughs> not this again. Oh, let me go for one more audition. They don't want you, boy. Of course they don't want me. Look at me. You're dressing me like a tit. <laughs> and you've changed the novel. There are two things I remind myself of often. The first is that the critic is he who can translate into another manner his impression of beautiful things. I wrote that. <laughs> and secondly, keep out of the black and in the red. Nothing in this game for two in a bed. You've only got your bus there. Oh, let's have a look what you What a woman! You are not presenting bullseye! Look at you. You may as well be lying in the gutter. Well, <coughs> we're all lying in the gutter, but some of us are getting back on the coach. <laughs> it's looking at the stars, Oscar, looking at the stars. Tell you what, next time that chair comes round, I'm on it. <laughs> come on! Come to Daddy! Is this all you have to say for yourself, boy? I have nothing else to declare. But my Guinness. Genius. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> it's my neck, Doctor. It's really, really stiff. I can hardly move it at all. I can't move my head from side to side properly. I can't nod. Okay. Well, let's take this off and have a look, shall we? Oh! Oh, that's much better. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You cower away from everything. You never stand up for anything. Well, I hate you. I hate you and I've had enough. <laughs> no, please, please don't. Please. No. Shoot him. Shoot him again! Shoot him again! Oh, I 
wouldn't touch that, Mr. Pallet. <laughs> oh, don't touch it. I told you. Not <laughs> no. I didn't know. I. No, I, no, I didn't know. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I have to ask you to leave. Your emotional responses are not in line with everyone else's. That's, not, that's great. I know. Don't worry. The death card doesn't always mean death. It can sometimes mean a really bad accident. <laughs> Mondays we have a whist drive, Tuesday is quiz night, Wednesday we have a visiting pianist for the sing-along. As you can see, we put fresh flowers in the hallway every morning. All our food is called en bleu. I think your father will have a really happy stay here at Sunny Meadows. Do I get my own room? Shut it! <laughs> it's very kind of you giving me a bed bath. It's all right. You worked here long? I don't work here. <laughs> well, hello everyone and welcome to the Imaginary Friends help group. Uh, now, as I'm sure all three of you are aware... Six. Sorry. <laughs> as I'm sure all six of you are aware, we're here to help you overcome your psychological... Excuse me, I'm really sorry. I actually wanted Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, right, yes, uh, that's not here. But if you pop next door, I'm sure they'll be able to help you with your problem. Oh, no, it's not me who's the alcoholic. It's Gordon. <laughs> I think, actually, you are in the right room. Let's make a start, shall we? Yes. Hello, I'm Karen, and this is my boyfriend, Tony. <laughs> How long have you had your imaginary boyfriend? Uh, well, he arrived just after my real boyfriend left me for another woman. Right, and what was your real boyfriend called? Tony. Right. Let's see the cause of that one. OK, and you are? My name's Tim, and I am Lawrence's imaginary friend. <laughs> Lawrence? Yes, he invented me during a lonely childhood, and I've been around ever since. <laughs> That's a very unusual case. Um, I hope you don't mind me asking. What do you think caused these delusions? Well, answer the lady. She's trying to help you. Uh, actually, I was... What the to... hell is this, Gordon? This is you making an effort, is it? <laughs> well, you're not having it. <laughs> I'm not drinking myself, but if it stops him getting it, it's worth it. Right, I think maybe you should be next door. Um, Karen, could you describe imaginary Tony to us? Yeah, well, as you can see, he's got rotten teeth, rampant acne, and he stinks. Which means no one will be interested in him. Which means he'll never leave me. So you can keep your eyes off him, you! <laughs> oh, I'm not interested. I can't see him. Yeah, well, I couldn't see him first. <laughs> right. That's that finished. You better not have any more in there. No, oh, you haven't. Right. Well, what? The pub? Yes, but I'm going to come and keep my eye on you. <laughs> what about you, mate? You coming? Don't look at me. I don't exist. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lawrence? Tony? He's not going anywhere. Look, just stay where you are. The point of this meeting is to ensure that you see that your imaginary friends are just figments of your own imagination. I hope you'll listen to this. Probably brought <laughs> on by your own issues of loneliness and isolation. And when you realise that, you'll be able to move forward all the more easily. So I think that we should take... Have you finished with this room yet? Uh, just a minute. OK, thanks. I think we've had a very <laughs> constructive week this week, and we've done very well. So I'll see you all next week. <laughs> OK, turn over. Mark it. Scene three, take one. Stand by, Tim. And action! Swap the stunt dummy over for Jim. Jim. <laughs> well, those contact lenses are uncomfortable. Well, take them out. Let me have a look. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, uh, with this victory, I finally put women's boxing firmly on the map, so hopefully now it will be taken more seriously. And tell me, what first attracted you to boxing? Was it the skipping? <laughs> Sorry? Do you like using a skipping rope? Well, I don't like or dislike it. It's just an essential part of my training. And when you are using a skipping rope, do you like to sing those little songs? <laughs> What songs? My mother said, I never should talk to strangers in the wood. No, of course I don't sing those songs. Look, can we just talk about the fight? Yeah, sure. Your opponent was looking very good in the early rounds. Yeah, she did have me uh, quite concerned in the third after she knocked me down. Were you tempted at that point to just take your gloves off and start pulling her hair? <laughs> I beg your pardon? You know, start scratching her eyes. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what, you look completely unstoppable in the fourth round. Yeah, yeah, I think that probably was my uh, best round. I did come out very far up after the knockdown. Yeah, yeah. You, you seem like a woman possessed. I was very fueled with aggression, yeah. I yeah. hope you don't mind me asking, but is it time of the month? <laughs> <laughs> time of the month? Yeah, you just have that look in your eyes, like, you know, when my wife's rolling out the red carpet. Look, mate! <laughs> is there a lot of pressure being a female boxer? Well, yeah. You know, getting things like shorts that match your boots. You're trying to wrap me up! So I'm just wondering what it's like to be a female boxer. It's exactly the same as being a male boxer. We train the same, we punch the same. Not as hard, though, eh? I could knock you out. I don't think so, do you, sweetheart? What? You want to find out? Go on, hmm? then, love. Do your best. <laughs> Are you sure it's not time of the month? Welcome to the 6th Annual Mathematicians' Convention. And what better way to start the seminar than with a joke? <laughs> Hello? I've got your phone number. <laughs> You. I'm calling from inside your house. I'm upstairs. This is a phone box. Damn. <laughs> okay, scene six and action. We're looking for the baby Jesus. Okay, let's stop you there, Emily. It's not right, is it? Let me ask you a question. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Cornflakes. No, no, no. What did you have for breakfast? Emily had cornflakes. I am Emily. No, you are a shepherd. You have to live the shepherd, feel the shepherd, know the emotions of you, the shepherd. You have to know what he had for breakfast, what his mother's called, what his wife's name is, what his father does for a living. Stanislavski states we shouldn't act, we should be. So, I'll ask you again, what did you have for breakfast? Cocoa Pops. That's it, hold it. <laughs> You are the shepherd. You know the shepherd. You don't know Emily. Emily has gone. The shepherd is here. What are you having for your tea tonight, Mr. Shepherd? Alphabetti spaghetti. Brilliant. Let's go again. <laughs> and the ones to watch. Lane three, Strasskopf. Lane two, Fleichmann. Lane one, Tavare. <laughs> There you go. Extraction finished, sir. Shall I wrap it? Wrap what? The tooth. Why would you do that? You don't want to get blood everywhere when you're taking it home. Well, then I want to take it home. The tooth fairy. The tooth fairy? I'm a 34-year-old man. Don't talk to me like a child. All right, please yourself. She that's going to lose out on £1.50 from the furries. They don't exist. Shh! <laughs> don't you realise one dies every time you say that? There's no such thing as tooth fairies. No, mate. If there's no such thing as tooth fairies, can you explain to me who it is that's rummaging through me bins at night looking for old teeth? It's probably foxes. Don't be ridiculous. Foxes have got plenty of their own teeth. <laughs> Besides, why would they go around leaving money under people's pillows? They don't, it's your parents. How dare you? Think my parents have got nothing better to do than dress up as furries and break into people's houses? They don't break into anyone's house. Well, how do they get the money under the pillow? They don't. Look, your parents put money under your pillow, my parents put money under my pillow. So you're telling me that parents are going into their children's bedrooms at night and exchanging money for their children's extracted teeth, they're not even telling them and blaming it on the fairies? Exactly. Sounds a bit far-fetched to me. 
Anyway, <laughs> what did they do with the teeth? Nothing, just chuck them in the bin. Oh, they shouldn't do that. That'll attract the foxes. <laughs> and another thing, why would the parents actually do this? I don't know, guilt? Guilt? Yeah, if they didn't give their children so much chocolate, they wouldn't have such rotten teeth. Well, you can't blame the parents for that. Well, who can you blame? Easter Bunny. <laughs> Hello, J. Terry Window Cleaning Services. You'd like your windows cleaned? OK, I'll just check the file of facts to see what my availability is. OK, I've got a window on Tuesday. <laughs> so I can't clean your windows then. I've got a window Thursday afternoon. Can't help you there. Ah, I haven't got a window on Friday. Let me clean your window then. Let's make it a window. Oh. 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 Darling? Oh. Oh. Darling? Oh, I was having another nightmare. About what? I was watching a tennis match. <laughs> <laughs> you spilled salt on the table. So? Well, it's bad luck unless you throw it over your shoulder. You should never let anything worry you. Nothing's that important in the big scheme of things. The way to think about it is this. Imagine the whole universe is a beach and the planet Earth is a tiny, tiny, tiny little pebble resting on that beach and you are a tiny, tiny, tiny little grain of sand on that pebble. See? It's not important. Now, what's worrying you? Hmm? I think I'm small for my age. <laughs> it's a lovely new place you've got here, Karen. Thanks. I'm really glad you came round. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. oh what an idiot. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Oh. oh, it's okay. I read this great new tip in a magazine. Apparently, it's the best thing to do if you spill white wine. Pour red wine all over it. <laughs> Or is it the other way round? <laughs> Lane three, Porowski. Lane two, the big American, Turner. And for Great Britain, in lane one, Tavare. <laughs> supposed to be counted out in the fifth. No, 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 you were supposed to get counted out. We agreed beforehand. We did not. We said that I almost get counted out in the fourth and then you actually get counted out. No, we didn't, you idiot. Don't call me an idiot. Or else what? I'll smack you in the face. Idiot. Right. <laughs> what did you do that for? I warned you not to call me an idiot. There's no need for that, you pillock. Oh, pillock now, is it? Yeah, pillock and idiot. Right. Have you? Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> 